Are you ready? Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Okay, so here's a really quick rundown of how this works. There's a lot of seed up in those big yellow tanks. You saw us putting it in. There's a big blower on the back and it blows the seed through these hoses and then out to the individual row units. There's the big blower on the back of the planter that blows the air to move the seed from the big seed tanks out to the little mini hoppers on each row. If you look inside here, there's a little bit of seed in there. So this hose is the hose that brings the seed into the mini hopper, and then this hose is actually a vacuum hose. Now behind this door, I can't open it up right now because all the seed will fall out, but behind this door there's a rotating seed disc with holes all the way around the outside of it spaced out properly to pick up and drop seed. So the vacuum hose is sucking air through this side of the disc, so the air is coming through those holes on the seed disc as it's rotating, and it picks up a seed out of the mini hopper takes it up and over and then drops it down into the seed tube. So as you're going along, the disc openers open a furrow in the ground. The gauge wheels keep the depth consistent with the disc openers. The seed is dropped off the plate, goes down the seed tube. Now there's the bottom of the seed tube right there. So the seed drops out into the furrow. The seed firmer slides over the top of the seed and makes sure that it's pressed firmly into the ground. And then the closing wheels come along and close the furrow. Okay, so we just start the two vacuum motors first. Then we flip these two switches up to auto load the meters. Then all the meters will turn just enough to load up with seed until the seed tube sensor senses that it's dropped a few seeds through the seed tube and they're all loaded up and you're ready to plant. Okay, I've already got the hybrid set right here. I need to go over here and set our uh, population we want to plant 35,000 seeds per acre turn the master plant switch on and there's our 35,000 and uh, we'll get going Well, everything seems to be working pretty good. One important thing to do though is to get out and dig up some seeds and make sure that it's actually doing what it says it's doing. I want to check the seed depth and check the spacing a little bit and uh, make sure that we're doing a good job of closing up the furrow. So when we get down to the end, I'll get out and we'll do a little digging and see what it's doing. Grab my handy little digging tool here and I'll put you up on my hat and we'll go check it out. All 
right, sometimes it's a little tricky to find some seeds, but we'll do the best we can. There's one right there, see him? There's another one right there. He was right there, okay. Spacing is really good, look at that. That's nice, that's really good. Okay, so now let's uh, sneak up on a few more seeds and check the depth. We want to be right about two inches, maybe slightly deeper, but not much. I don't want to be past two and a quarter. There he is, right there. That seed is two inches exactly. And I like to sneak up on them from behind like this to make sure that there's no air pockets around the seed or any pockets of dry dirt. That looks really good. I'm planting along, minding my own business, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, woo, 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 sirens, alarms, and I look down at the screen on the 2020, not planting on row two, not planting on row four. I checked to make sure that I still had the vacuum motors going, make sure that I didn't accidentally bump one of the hydraulic levers and uh, shut the blower off or shut the vacuums off, and uh, everything was going. So then I look down at my field view on the uh, iPad, and there's uh, another row showing up that's suddenly not planting. It looked exactly like what happens when you run out of corn, and I knew that couldn't be the case because I'm just getting started in this field. We just loaded the planter up. So I got off to check to see if there was seed in the mini hoppers on the rows that were not planting. There was not, and it quickly became obvious what was wrong. Let me go show you. This is almost kind of funny. It's so obvious what's wrong when you get around the backside of the planter here. So this big blower right here, whenever the planter is down and you have the hydraulic down pressure engaged, this blower is running, forcing air through the ductwork and into that ductwork to blow seed out to the mini hoppers. But look at this. The duct came disconnected. So this was flopping around like one of those crazy inflatable salesman guys in front of the uh, car dealerships, just flopping its arm like crazy, blowing air everywhere. And as you can see, there's seed waiting to get pushed out to the mini hoppers. So I'm guessing every one of these by now is probably empty. Oh, that one's got some in it. Row two was one of the ones that was not planting. Yep, no seed in there. Okay, that was a super easy repair. I put the hose back on there, tightened the clamp on. Now watch this, this is really cool. This is one of the things I love the most about this precision planting system with individual electric motors on each row so that they can shut off themselves. Watch this. I'm just gonna turn around 
and get back on my GPS line, get headed back the other direction uh, in the way that I was going. And after I get turned around here, I'm gonna set the planter down a little ways before the problem occurred. And since it knows where seeds have been dropped and where seeds have not been dropped, it'll just automatically fill in the problem. All right, I'm locked onto the guidance line. And you can just watch this happen right on the screen. I'm gonna just go ahead and set the planter down right now. Watch this, this is awesome. It's only running those two rows right now. And then boom, the rest of the planter starts up. And you will never be able to tell later on in the year that we had a problem there with the planter. Guys, look what just happened. That little car just stopped in the field and dropped off this. I'm pretty happy about that. Let me give you a quick rundown of all these screens that are in the cab right now. This is the John Deere display. It's a 4640 model. This is the same screen that I had mounted on the Gator last week when I was driving around mapping the waterways and the borders around the edges of the field. And all we're using it for right now is auto guidance. It has uh, the line set up on it and it's driving the tractor so that I don't have to guess where to drive. Next up we have the Precision Planting 2020 monitor. This is actually controlling the planter right now. I have loaded the maps of the waterways and the field boundaries into this monitor and it's actually telling the rows when to shut off and when to turn on based on entering and exiting waterways and overlapping areas that we've already planted like when we pull into an end row. This is the monitor that's in control of shutting each individual motor off that runs the seed discs on each row unit. It's also displaying a whole bunch of information for us right now. It's, uh, it's controlling and displaying the downforce, which is how much pressure is applied down to each row to keep it in the ground. It's showing us right now the furrow moisture, the soil temperature, uh, the spacing, the singulation. Singulation is a metric that describes the percentage of times that one seed is dropped every time one seed is supposed to be dropped. Right here we're seeing skips and multiples. A skip is when we were supposed to drop a seed but we failed to and a multiple is when we dropped more than one seed in one spot and that neither of those are good. We don't want to be doing that. It's displaying the ride quality and our vacuum on each side of the planter and this is where I would go to control the downforce or to control the population if I wanted to change it. Okay and up here on the iPad probably all you're gonna see is my reflection but this is making a map. Right now we're looking at the singulation map and we could look at maps of any of the things that we can see on the 2020 monitor. So I'm gonna have to find a time when the Sun isn't shining quite so good. Maybe at night would be a good time to show you all of the things I can do on the iPad because that's really really cool. We'll have to put that on the list of things to include in an upcoming video. It's just way too shiny right now to be able to show you all the cool stuff that this program can do on the iPad. Then up here is our control for our clean sweep row cleaners. This is run by air pressure. So I can raise and lower the row cleaners and I can put down pressure on them if I want to. It's a really good system. We really like it. Right now I'm running just a little bit of down pressure on them. When I'm filling the planter, I like to leave one or two bags out on the platform on the planter, depending on whether there's an odd or even number of total bags for the field. That way, just in case the planter isn't exactly right on for population, I can still get the planter empty or close to empty at the end of the field. Also, if there's an odd number of bags, and then maybe if there's some point rows where one side of the planter is planting more often than the other side when we're finishing the field, that way I can take that last bag and get it divided equally up so that I don't run one side of the planter out and still have seed left in the other side. Alrighty, just got moved to a new field. It's bean ground from last year so it worked up really nice and smooth. It wasn't chisel plowed. It's always more fun planting on a field that had beans on it last year. 
you don't have to deal with the root balls and it's just a lot nicer environment to plant into. It looks like there's a little rain popping up on the radar, maybe coming down from the north. We might actually get rained out this afternoon, I'm not sure, but hopefully not. So that beep means that it stopped planting at the end of the row, so I lift it up and turn around, and that's really all I have to do to get the tractor turned around, is to start the turn with the steering wheel. Right about here I can push the auto guidance button and it'll automatically steer right into where it needs to be for the next pass. Drop the planter back in the ground and it'll start planting as soon as it comes out of the end row based on its GPS knowledge of where it is. Now that we're rocking and rolling planting, the weather is kind of uncertain. It looks like it might rain a little bit this week. It looks like it might not. I am going to pretty much throw my normal YouTube uploading schedule away and uh, I'm just gonna try to bring you guys as much content as I can there's a lot of things going on here with the planter there's a lot to know I know you guys are gonna have a lot of questions and there's gonna be things that you want to know about and things that you want to see more in depth and closer up so my plan is to just keep throwing videos out kind of as much as I can it might be every couple of days it might be every day for a little while it might be every three or four days it depends on how the weather goes. I really don't know what to tell you. I'm just planning on winging it when it comes to uploading videos. Because my goal is, like I said, I want to get as much out there for you guys to see and give you guys a chance to ask questions. I might even post a video where all I do is sit in the tractor while I'm planting and just answer your questions. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I am here to serve you. I want you to be able to learn as much and see as much as you can during this planting season that can be very short if the weather cooperates and it can drag on forever if the weather does not cooperate. So if you guys have any questions, things that you've seen today that you want to know more about, I do plan on talking about the different types of seed that we're planting. I plan on talking about uh, the functionality of our waterways and the reasoning behind where we put them. And I plan on talking some about tile and drainage of fields. Those are all things that I'm going to try to cover a little bit during planting season if I can. If things don't work out, I'll maybe do individual videos about each of those topics later on. You go ahead and ask whatever questions you have. Let me know what things you want to see more of and closer up. And I'll try to help you out so that you can see the things that you want to see and learn the things that you want to learn. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. I love talking with you guys in the comment section. Um, I try my best to get to the comments as quickly as I can. Sometimes, especially during this time of year and harvest, it might take me three or four days before I can respond to your comment, but I will do my best to try to reply to everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for riding along. And I'll see you next time, whenever that is.